Now you can see that heavy smoke coming from the crash site again. This is the westbound lanes. However, we do know that the freeway is closed on both sides of the freeway. This is video of the scene less than one hour ago. And again, that black smoke rising from the scene. We do have crews right now on scene giving us more information. We do want to map out exactly where this is taking place along I-70. You can see here this is right there along the eastern Franklin County, Licking County line. We have reached out to the Highway Patrol and also surrounding law enforcement agencies. And of course, you can see and you can tell that this is a massive crash. A lot of first responders on the scene. And we've been watching this since right before 9 o'clock this morning. 10 TV's Gabriela Garcia was looking at this and brought it to you as breaking news. Gabby, what's the latest? Yeah, good morning, ladies. Uh, we take a look over here at my map there at I-70 at State Route 310. Let's go to the chroma key. Okay. Thank you. So I-70 at 310, you can tell people are being guided off of the roadway in both directions, eastbound and westbound. This has been the case for quite some time. It looks like a few folks are able to get on I-70, but those are those westbound lanes. So we're going to keep track of this situation, but for now, this is a big deal. The road is closed at State Route 310, I-70 again in both directions there in Etna, but it's also affecting folks in Kirkersville because of this crash and ensuing vehicle fire. So I want you guys to remember to take US 40 instead, whether that's eastbound or westbound. This is a big deal. A lot of emergency vehicles there. You want to give them room to work because it'll take a while to clear out. I'll send things back to you ladies. All right, Gabriela, thank you. We do know that this crash involved a semi and what we're learning is a commercial bus mm -hmm. with uh, dozens of passengers on board. We do, and we want to get out to 10 TV's Amy Steigerwald. She's live west of that crash scene. Amy, what can you tell us? What can you see? Yeah, a lot happening here right now, Tracy and Angela. We're just west of 310, and we want to uh, give you a look at this scene. You can see as uh, we kind of zoom into what's going on that there are dozens of first responders here on scene right now, and you can also see that both those east and westbound lanes completely shut down. No traffic is getting by. Now, obviously, this is a very developing uh, situation. The black smoke that you were, were talking about, you guys, has died down. We're not seeing too much smoke uh, develop at this time, but definitely still a very big first responders presence. We spoke with the Licking County Sheriff's Office. They say there are multiple injuries associated with this crash. Obviously, still looking for an exact number on what to do, uh, exactly how many there were. We're going to continue to remain out here, hopefully get some more information. But uh, like Gabby mentioned, this is very uh, going to have impact your commute in both directions. You can see that there are cars getting by here on 310 OK in both directions. They're kind of avoiding this. But if you take a look, uh, once this semi passes, you're going to be able to see just how far uh, this is backed up. Traffic is being diverted off of uh, I-70 as we speak. Again, still a very uh, active situation. I'm going to send things back to you guys as we work to learn more. For now, I'm live. Amy Stagerwald for 10TV News. All right, Amy, thank you. And, of course, she said a very active situation. ODA just tweeted out uh, moments ago that the estimated duration of this closure mm -hmm. is unknown. And we can see clearly why. Yes, definitely a major response there. We're going to stay on this breaking news for you. We'll have the latest for you on 10 TV News starting at noon. We'll break in as appropriate. In the meantime, you can keep up to date with what's happening. We'll have a crawl at the bottom of your screen. We now return you to regularly scheduled programming.
get down there somehow. <laughs> you can bust your traffic. What's that? You can probably bust your traffic. Yeah, he probably took one of their trucks. It's what's up on the flatbed, isn't it? Uh, is it four and a half minutes? Shit, confirmed. Three minutes. Can you hear me and see me okay? Can you see me okay? Uh oh, there, we're fixing it. Just want to make sure our shot was good.
minute and a half. Am I first? What? Yeah, well, why don't you, uh, why don't you come on this side? The sun's in your face. I'm just gonna run this up off that ledge. Cause I don't know how I'm gonna... Good morning, it's Tracy Townsend and Angela Ann here in the 10 TV studio with breaking news. We're interrupting the regular programming because of what you see on your screen. A crash and a fire on I-70 closing all of the lanes of the highway. This happened near the intersection at State Route 310. This is in West Licking County, just south of Pataskala. In the past 10 minutes, the Highway Patrol confirmed this is a serious injury crash involving a semi truck and a charter bus. And again, you're looking at video of the scene from just about over an hour and a half ago, a couple of hours ago when we first notified of the scene. A lot of heavy smoke coming from that crash site. 10 TV has a number of crews on the scene now working to get you the latest information. You see where we are. We have this mapped out for you. It's I-70 near 310, the intersection there. Our crew's on either side of that crash right now on two overpasses. So we do want to get right to the scene right now. 10 TV's Amy Steigerwald is there. Amy, you are just west of that crash site. Can you give us the latest? Yeah, we've been here for about an hour and we can tell you things have not let up. We've seen a number of ambulances and hazmat crews come and go from the scene and actually just within the past five minutes or so, we did see a CODA bus head to the scene along with two school buses. Uh, not sure exactly why potentially transporting people who were on uh, that bus that was involved in this crash. Again, we're still working to learn exactly how many people were involved, but we have learned from authorities that there are multiple injuries because of this crash uh, again, and we've seen Many of those injuries get transported to area hospitals. Dozens of crews still remain on scene in both those east and westbound lanes of I-70 are closed. Again, we are just a little bit west of this crash right over us at State Route 310. And uh, we've seen crews just continue to respond. Things aren't really letting up. That smoke that was uh, here about about an, two hours ago or so has died down. We're not seeing a lot of smoke develop anymore because of this crash. But like it, I mentioned, we're seeing dozens of uh, emergency crews still respond over here. Again, we're working to learn you get to uh, the latest information Information, hoping to learn more within the next couple of minutes, but our crews are really spanned all across Central Ohio trying to figure out exactly what led up to this and hopefully we'll be able to update you very soon. For now, I'm going to send things back to you guys in the studio reporting live. Amy Stuggerwald for 10 TV News. All right, Amy, thank you for that report. Well, as Amy mentioned, we do have a number of crews out there, including Lacey Crisp. She just got on the scene and she's on the Smoke Road overpass of I-70, half mile east of 310. Lacey, what can you see? Yeah, I'm about a mile east of where Amy is standing. If you see just beneath me, this is the fiery chaos that is on 70 right now, right between 310. Now, what I can tell you is they're trying to turn around some of these semi trucks to get them off of the road. This has been going on for a couple of hours right now. This is a massive, massive response. We have seen uh, fire departments from West Licking, Turo, Violet, 
Whitehall. Uh, there are so many different departments here because this is such a massive scene. There are so many injuries. The Ohio State Highway Patrol will be investigating this crash. We are waiting on them for the exact information on what happened during the crash, how many people have been injured in this crash. But as you can see, if uh, my photographer Rich can span the camera around, the line of traffic on the other side of the freeway, it is absolutely at a standstill. And we fully expect it will look like this for hours. Now, we have seen the State Highway Patrol and Lickey County Sheriff's Office try to divert traffic, try to get people out of this area. I also talked to an Aetna Township trustee. They're trying to clear out these roadways to make sure that it is as safe as possible for those first responders to get down there on the freeway to clear up this area to make sure that anyone who still needs first aid, who still needs help, gets to it and uh, to make sure that everyone else gets off this freeway safely. Reporting live, Lacey Crisp, 10 TV News. All right, Lacey, thank you for that update. Well, we certainly know that she talked about the miles of traffic mm -hmm. uh, because of this crash. Unknown when that will reopen. So let's get to uh, Gabby Garcia as we work to learn more, especially when we're hearing about a lot of transports is still taking place from this scene. Gabby? Yeah, good morning. Definitely clear that this won't be cleared out for a while. Here's a look at the I-70 at 310 camera. It's pointed at 310. It's not even pointed at the line of cars below on I-70. But we do know, like we've mentioned repeatedly, I-70 in both directions shut down completely at 310. That's not only involving people in Etna, but people in Kirkersville as well. You notice with that line of cars that Lacey was talking about, it spans very far eastward on, especially on those westbound lanes. But like I said, both directions of I-70 closed at 310 because of that crash and those ensuing vehicle fires from both vehicles involved there. The detour, just remember US-40 in both directions. You're not going to get to your destination as fast as you normally would on I-70, but that's your best bet this morning. I'll send things back to you. All right, Gabby, thank you. We do have some video in in from drone 10 that we want to show you over the scene out there. Um, that's what you're seeing there. And you can see the video there of these buses, these charter buses, and you can kind of make out that it says Pioneer Trails bus. We are really working to get you the latest information. Again, as the highway is closed there, these pictures really pretty graphic, disturbing to see uh, of the scene out there in Licking County. So again, we can tell you that the Highway Patrol is leading this investigation. They have confirmed that for some reason unknown right now that the semi truck uh, slammed into the back of that charter bus. And again, these are images you're seeing from Drone 10. Uh, multiple people on board that bus. We do confirm right now from Ohio Health that at least five people, patients have been taken into their hospital systems. We also know patients have been taken to Grant. Uh, and as you know, Tracy, that mm -hmm. is a trauma one hospital here in Central Ohio. It's one of the uh, two major tra level one trauma hospitals that we have here in Central Ohio. So um, as you can see from these pictures, you can understand why that is so important to have that expertise there uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So once again, if you're just joining us and wondering why we are breaking into programming, it is because of this fiery crash that happened about two hours ago on an I-70 westbound lanes. But because of this crash, the massive size, both sides of the freeway right now are shut down right by State Route 310. That is in Licking County right there in Pataskala. So we have multiple first responders from several agencies in that area from Licking County, also Eastern Franklin County. Um, again, as you look live back at the crash scene, you can see how massive the situation is. We do know CODA is sending a bus there, possibly to help transport some of the people who were on that charter bus mm -hmm. to safety. You can see there's some school buses. Those were not involved in this crash, but just arrived in the last few moments, possibly to transport people. To help people. transport yep. people out. A massive show of mutual aid there on this Central Ohio freeway that uh, is usually pretty busy, especially in those morning hours. Again, this happening just before 9 o'clock this morning after the CBS Morning Show was wrapping up. And in fact, Gabriella and I were doing a cut in uh, with the latest morning news. And so you can see why this situation is so fluid um, with that, uh, what we know now or what we're piecing together with the help of and get investigators from the Highway Patrol, a semi slamming into the back of uh, these, at least one of these buses in this massive show of uh, emergency response there on the scene. 
And certainly we know that this is uh, pretty traumatic as well as you see people slowly walking to those school buses uh, because of the unknown injuries and the extent of those injuries. We are staying on top of this, but uh, we're working to find out where that bus was coming from, where it was going to. And again, I-70 westbound closed where this crash happened, but also eastbound because of this investigation. So let's get to Gabby Garcia again. And Gabby, as we take a look at this closure, we're talking State Route 310 right there at I-70 but certainly the delays extend much farther. Yeah, good morning. So this situation very fluid. The camera for right now from ODOT is not even pointed at I-70. It's pointed at 310 off of I-70 and you notice traffic even starting to get heavy on 310 because of this situation. The more that crews get to the scene, the more chaotic this could get for a commute. So let's remind you where this closure is. This is on I-70 in both directions at State Route 310. This is affecting drivers in Aetna. This is affecting drivers farther east in Kirkersville. People cannot move right now because of this crash and those vehicle fires involved there. What I want you guys to remember, if you need to head out right now, take US 40 in either direction, east or westbound. It's not going to be as fast as I-70, but that is your best bet for a detour this morning. That's what I recommend. I'll send things back to you guys. All right, we do want to level set just in case you're just joining us now at 1039, wondering why Angela and I are here. We are interrupting programming because of a major crash on I-70. This is uh, affecting, of course, travel. The highway is shut down. This is in West Licking County. It is, and so we're checking you back live to the scene right now because uh, obviously you can see all the first responders there kind of to the right of the scene. Those school buses, again, not part of the crash, but there to help transport some of the people who were on that charter bus when this crash happened. And again, both sides of the freeway right now shut down. You are looking at live pictures. We are trying to be as judicious as possible because we don't know the extent of the injuries of the people on board, but we do know multiple people have been taken to area hospitals. So again, just to confirm uh, again for you, if you're just joining us, it appears a semi truck crashed into the back of a charter bus right about 830 this morning. This mm -hmm. is video from our ODOT cameras when that happened. And just look at that fiery smoke coming from that crash scene. And that is what we were able to show you this morning in our breaking our regular news cut in just before nine o'clock. Um, we have been starting to cover this shortly after it happened. And you, as you could imagine, just a fluid situation there uh, with that bus crash. And so we have our crews there on the scene working to bring you the latest coverage, including some drone video we were able to get of this scene. And again, we are not trying to get in so close that we would show you anything that would be upsetting or that would be too revealing or impede the investigation that is underway. But we are unable to see there that this appears to be buses from the Pioneer Trails bus company, which um, from what we're able to piece together right now is out of Millersburg, Ohio. Again, this was on the westbound lanes of I-70. Everything shut down there. And we are getting from the Associated Press. How many, can you say it again for me, producer? Three killed in this crash, thank you, 15 to hospitals here in the area. So again, we are taking a pause here as we are digesting that information. Uh, very, very unfortunate and sad. Three killed out of this crash. We are getting that from the Associated Press. So right now we are in touch with ODOT as well because obviously we're trying to see whether their traffic cameras were able to catch anything. We just heard from the press secretary, Matt Bruning, who is telling our assignment desk that their cameras did not capture the actual crash in play, but they're seeing what they can find. Obviously, that would be part of the investigation as well as now this crash turns deadly. We have confirmed again, three people killed, 15 taken to the hospital um, when the semi crashed into the back of that charter bus. Again, westbound lanes, uh, the bus coming into town really from I-70 right there at State Route 310. And again, we do know that those taken to hospitals here in central Ohio have been taken to, um, at, we do know that Ohio Health has confirmed five uh, people have been uh, taken to their level one trauma centers. And so we are going to be monitoring where the folks have been transported to area hospitals, 15 though, uh, two hospitals again, three killed out of this deadly crash uh, on I-70. Again, the highway there still closed. This is at State Route 310. We have the map there on your screen so you can see that um, a lot of people trans 
travel on that way and we were able to show you the traffic back up as first responders were out there trying to get the traffic off of the road. This is um, going to be an investigation that does last for quite some time, especially as we now are able to share with you the unfortunate news that three people have been killed out of this, again, a semi crashing into the bus. Angela? And Tracy, we're just getting new information into the 10 TV newsroom right now. We are seeing posts from our CBS affiliate up in Cleveland. This is from uh, cleveland19.com. One of the reporters there updating the situation, saying that the staff with the Tuscarora's Valley Local School District told 19 News that the bus was occupied by banned students. Mm -hmm. So again, this is something that we are working to confirm um, whether or not these students were from Ohio or coming into Ohio for some sort of band competition. But again, uh, this is what we are working to confirm right now with the Tuscarora's Valley Local Schools mm -hmm. talking about uh, band students on that charter bus as part of this accident. And that's the uh, Tus Tuscarora's Valley High School there is in Zorville, Ohio. Apparently these students were coming to a conference. We are working to get more information on this. Certainly a very tragic uh, ordeal that we are bringing to you now live here on 10 TV. Uh, and again, that is why we are interrupting the programming that you normally see at this time. If we can, let's uh, ask our directors, let's get you a map again, showing you the situation exactly of where this is located. This is I-70 east of the downtown Columbus area or outside of the 270 outabout. So you can see right there, State Route 310. That is the site of the crash that we're talking about. Westbound is where the crash happened, but both west and eastbound lanes are now shut down. They have been for the past two hours. And from our sources and talking with ODOT, they say right now, because of this investigation, the cleanup, and really just first trying to get some of the people involved to safety, it is unknown how long this closure will last, most likely throughout most of the day, mm -hmm. especially now that we have been able to confirm that three people were killed out of this crash. Well, we do want to go out to 10 TV news reporter Lacey Crisp, who was uh, there at the scene. And Lacey, we understand you just got some information from the semi driver. Yeah, as you can imagine, there are a lot of people who are stuck in this traffic behind this fiery crash. Now, what I can tell you is we are seeing some movement uh, on the scene right now. We're seeing some of the fire trucks, some of the ladder trucks moving out of the way um, from the westbound lanes to the eastbound lanes, trying to move out of the way of where the crash actually happened. Uh, I'm not sure exactly why. We're still waiting for the Ohio State Highway Patrol to get on scene to give us an updated information about some of those some of those questions that we all have about what exactly happened in this crash what led up to the crash how many people are injured for sure how many people are deceased um, and, and just getting a better idea of what um, what we're looking at here but I did talk to a semi driver who's uh, right beneath us right now he's been stuck here for a couple of hours he was right behind the crash he did not see the crash but he saw the fiery aftermath we didn't see much at first. As we were coming up the road, we heard something coming over the CB saying, oh, there's a wreck up ahead. So we started to slow down, and as we were getting closer, I saw smoke coming way up ahead of us. So as we were coming down to a, uh, to a stop, I exited my vehicle, kind of went up and looked up the side, and I saw several tractor trailers, well, one tractor trailer for sure on fire, a car on fire, and they were trying to pull people out of a bus. Yeah, so this semi-truck driver has been driving for about 10 years. He drives in the area from Pittsburgh to Cincinnati in the region, and he tells me this is the absolute worst crash that he has ever seen. He says the absolute destruction of that bus was heartbreaking to see, and he says his thoughts and prayers are with all of those on the scene, hoping that uh, a few people were seriously injured, although we're getting reports saying otherwise. But uh, as you can see beneath us, uh, those semi-truck drivers are going to be waiting here for a while. This is going to be a massive reconstruction scene, hazmat scene, as authorities try to get a handle on uh, the investigation, to try to answer some of those questions about what happened and, and try to contain this area. We did see as they moved the bus a little bit, there was some smoke that started to flare up a little bit more. Um, that was about 15, 20 minutes ago. We have not seen any smoke since then, but we're keeping an eye on this situation for you. Reporting live, Lisa Crisp, 10TV News.
All right, Lacey, thank you so much. And again, to recap, unfortunately, we have been able to confirm through the Associated Press three people killed, 15 others injured. And uh, the AP is also reporting from the Licking County EMA uh, spokesperson, Sean Grady. He says that the bus was transporting students from a school in eastern Ohio with 57 people on board. Uh, uh, apparently going to some sort of band conference mm -hmm. is what we were able to get from our affiliate out of the Cleveland area. So as you can imagine, a lot of anxious yeah. people wanting to know um, who's on that bus, how everybody is doing. Uh, if you are just joining us, we have been covering this for you for about the past, well, since it happened just before 9 o'clock this morning, this bus crash that has resulted in three people being killed. There are a host of injuries, and the highway there, I-70, is shut down. Um, as you can see, this mass response there from emergency responders. So Ohio State Highway Patrol is likely leading this investigation, but there are multiple agencies also assisting. And uh, you can see right there, there is some movement, but again, um, this investigation just beginning to how this crash happened mm -hmm. and you can still see some school buses there on the upper left side those are likely to transport more people as needed they were not part of this crash they arrived on scene about an hour or so later we also have some video from drone 10 mm -hmm. showing you um really the how this kind of played out there we can see the semi truck behind that charter bus we've been able to confirm that that charter bus was uh contracted out of pioneer Trails. Yes, that's what we could see from that Drone 10 video mm -hmm. that we were able to show you. Uh, that bus company there based out of Millersburg from what we can do with our computer assisted uh, research right now. Um, I don't, there it is, that's that video that we were able to show you. Um, you can see just from those images um, just how awful this was and we heard from Lacey Crisp who was talking to a semi driver out of that area that um, it was, he described it as the worst he'd ever seen. And then when you go back out to the live video or some of the other video we've been able to show you of the scene, you can see that mutual aid, that massive response there that we've been able to show you. Right now on your screen, you see uh, probably the Licking County Sheriff's Office. They're taking that bus. There's two school buses that we have been sharing with you. Those are there to transport people from the scene. And it looks like they are finally moving. We also have uh, Clay Gordon joining us here in studio. Clay, you have some information about the bus. Yes, as we see those school buses pulling off there earlier, we saw a bunch of uh, teenagers or younger children entering that bus from the crash scene. We've learned from our CBS affiliate in the Cleveland area, Cleveland 19, that some of those students involved were from the Tuscarora Valley County Band. They have confirmed that those students were involved in this crash. So the 10 TV newsroom did reach out to Tuscarora Valley County for a comment on this. They did say to us that the school district does confirm that a bus with their students was involved with a crash, but couldn't confirm that it was this specific crash. So again, Tuscarora Valley County band students and the district there has confirmed to 10 TV that students were involved from that school and they are w still waiting to give us the ages of the students involved. Tracy and Angela. All right, Clay, thank you for that. We want to get out to 10TV's Amy Steigerwald. You have an update for us, Amy? Yeah, we are seeing uh, lots of ambulances and hazmat crews come and go from this scene, but we did just watch two school buses uh, leave this scene. Now, those school buses, again, not involved in this incident, but they were, uh, it appeared at least they were transporting people away from the scene who were involved in this. But if you take a look over my shoulder, you can see that this crash still blocking both directions of the highway. This right now uh, in both those east and westbound lanes. Again, we have seen multiple crews come and go from the scene. Also, as we mentioned, confirming three people dead in multiple uh, Santa area hospitals as we still work to learn what exactly led up to this. From our angle where we're at, we're not seeing too much smoke at this point. We're just seeing emergency crews continue to respond. What you can't see from our angle is the traffic that has backed up behind this overpass over on 310 uh, in the eastbound lanes, I should say. Uh, that is kind of away from this crash, probably about a mile or so down the road. So if you 
you again are heading near I-70, uh, completely avoid this area because you will not get anywhere. It's been blocked for a couple of hours now in both directions. We still have uh, crews blocking the entrances of the highway at this area. 310 additionally is pretty backed up still. We're seeing traffic get by uh, slowly but surely. Uh, but again, this is going to be quite a while until we see this clear up. For now, I'm going to send things back to you guys. Reporting live, Amy Stuggerwald, 10 TV News. All right, Amy, thank you. Obviously, we have team coverage of the situation here along I-70 and State Route 310. Both sides of the freeway shut down. A lot of diversion happening right now with not only traffic, but also we just saw, as Amy said, those school buses taking some of those charter school uh, charter bus passengers away from the scene, likely to another staging area, if you will, to kind of debrief the whole situation. Sadly, we've learned three people were killed out of this crash, 15 others injured. We don't know the extent of their injuries, but we do know several area hospitals are now part of that whole triage situation. And we do want to sort of take you to the scene. You know this is a developing situation, and we do have an interview with a semi-truck driver who, took, who saw all of this, and we want to Go to that now if we can. We didn't see much at first. As we were coming up the road, we heard something coming over the CB saying, oh, there's a wreck up ahead. So we started to slow down. And as we were getting closer, I saw smoke coming way up ahead of us. So as we were coming down to a, uh, to a stop, I exited my vehicle, kind of went up and looked up the side, and I saw several tractor trailers. Well, one tractor trailer for sure on fire, a car on fire and they were trying to pull people out of a bus. I saw them, they had a ladder up in one window because there was a couple people exiting from the front of the bus and um, it looks like they were near the rear of the bus trying to pull a couple people off. Uh, it looked like the tractor trailer had completely rear-ended into the end of the uh, school, uh, not school bus, the, um, the bus. It's uh, like a charter bus and there was too much flames going on. Uh, there was a flaming tire on the side of the road Lots of smoke, lots of water going everywhere, but I saw a lot of people standing off in the distance up ahead. How would you describe the damage? Uh, it's catastrophic. Um, the one tractor trailer is completely burnt through. There's a car that's completely destroyed and burnt through. Um, the rear end of the bus is completely destroyed and partially burned, and then there's another tractor trailer ahead of that with its trailer completely smashed on the rear end. This is probably one of the worst. I've seen overturned tankers, I've seen cars on fire, trucks on fire, but I've never seen this many, this bad. Um, as for the damage that I saw, this is one of the worst that I've seen. What, are, what is going through your mind as you're standing here watching this massive response, knowing how many people are probably injured? Oh, I'm just hoping, you know, there's not too many injured. I'm sure there's a couple, but, you know, I'm, I, I'm hoping that as many as are that can be okay are okay um, and you know that they just try and sort through all this figure out what happened and help everybody that needs help. Again, Lacey Crisp getting that interview with that semi-driver, very descriptive. Yeah, a very um, eyewitness account there and as you heard from him, it sounds like it wasn't just a semi truck and a charter bus mm -mm. involved. He saw a car oh. as well on fire. And a tractor trailer. And a tractor trailer. So. Um, Definitely, uh, we're going to work through some of those details as we try to work to learn more about this. But again, um, the Licking County EMA confirming to us that it was transporting students from a school bus. We've also confirmed through the Tuscarawas Valley Local School District that they did have students that were part of a band yes. that were being taken on this charter bus. So again, this is just a mass casualty situation that we have been covering there on I-70. Uh, Gabby Garcia is joining us again. Gabby, you have been covering this right from the beginning. Yeah, good morning. Just before 9 a.m. this morning in our last cut in of the day during uh, CBS mornings, that's when we got wind of the situation and noticed it and could see it on the camera. Right now, the camera from ODOT turned away from I-70. It's looking at 310 there, but you notice there's even some slower traffic on 310, but I-70 is the main thing we want to point out to you because both directions, as we've mentioned many times in this broadcast, both directions of I-70 completely shut down at State Route 310 will likely be that way for a while. It'll affect drivers in Aetna, but also drivers farther 
east in Kirkersville because of the traffic backup that we have seen many times if you've been tuning in this morning. So to avoid that situation, avoid I-70 altogether in this area. Take US-40 eastbound, take US-40 westbound. That's your best bet for a detour. It's not as fast as I-70, so let whoever needs to know that you're going to be late to your destination know because you likely will be. I'll send things back to you. All right, thank you so much. We're right at about 1057 and again, you're getting live coverage now. Three people killed, 15, at least 15 injured out of a massive bus crash on Interstate 70 this morning. And that's why we are breaking into programming because of this. Um, not only is this a traffic situation, but a deadly situation. And um, we know that somehow band students are involved. We don't know how many of them are taken to the hospital. We do know 15 others at the hospital and three people killed. So we are working to learn all of that information for you as we deal with this breaking news situation right here that is affecting not only Central Ohio, but now we know Northeast Ohio with students confirmed from the Tuscarora's Valley Local District. Uh, and we also just heard from uh, an eyewitness there, another semi driver on 70 this morning who saw this happen. He told our Lacey Crisp, who's one of the two crews that we have there on the scene, um, describing what he saw as the semi driver hit the back of the bus, but also says that he saw a car and a tractor trailer involved in this. And that would explain this massive show of uh, smoke and fire that you see on your screen. This is what we captured this morning just before nine o'clock when we began our coverage again of this breaking news on I-70. This part of uh, Central Ohio is West Licking County. We are just south of Pataskala. Many of you familiar with that area and you know in that morning commute it is quite busy out there. The highway is shut down and as this plays out with the investigation and the rescue, um, we do imagine that this part of the road is going to be shut down for some time. It is. And so as you look at some video here from Drone 10 that was right there at the scene about 30, 40 minutes ago, we also saw a group of uh, people that we now know to be those band students mm -hmm. kind of standing off to the side. Just moments ago, we saw many of them loading up into those school buses and being taken away um, to a safer location, obviously not off the side of the freeway, but also probably an area where they can be debriefed talked to by some investigators and also likely some counseling as well mm -hmm. as they come to grips with what just happened in the last two and a half hours. And we can tell you 57 people were on board that bus. And again, this happened just before nine o'clock this morning. And we've been showing you um, I-70 West. This is where it happened, where it's near the Smoke Road underpass, if you know where that is. We've been able to show you not just the drone 10 video that you see, but the massive backup out there. As we have two crews on the scene um, who've been able to show us, um, here's the map for you so you can see the area that we are talking about, especially if you are just joining us now at 11 o'clock as we continue our breaking news coverage of this bus crash. A charter bus carrying students from a high school was rear ended by a semi on uh, I-70. And these students we are told are from Eastern Ohio. This is the scene that we were able to show you this morning. Right now we can tell you three people were killed, 15 injured. We do know a number of those injured have been taken to central area Central Ohio area hospitals, including uh, hospitals in the Ohio health system. We also know Grant Medical Center uh, Trauma One Center in downtown Columbus also receiving some of the injured people there. We have reporters uh, stationed there. Kevin Landers showing us some of the medics that arrived about an hour ago. We also have a uh, reporter Colin Dorsey who is there at the scene in Pataskala trying to find out where some of these banned students have been taken now as well. So again, this is all happening in Southwest <coughs> Licking um, area, mm -hmm. kind of right there along the Eastern Franklin County line as well, but multiple agencies assisting with the situation. And we in fact saw, uh, got word that CODA was going to be helping the Central Ohio Transit Authority, helping to transport people out there. We were able to show you just a short time ago, um, two yellow school buses. And again, we were uh, reassuring you that those were not part of it. In fact, uh, 10 TV news reporter Amy Steigerwald brought us that coverage. Amy, what are you seeing now? Yeah, well, we saw that Coda bus along with two other school buses come to this scene uh, probably about uh, 20 minutes ago and leave the scene carrying uh, people that were involved in this crash. And what we're seeing right now, we're a little bit west of the crash, and you can see that both lanes still blocked, both east and westbound lanes, and there are uh, dozens of first responders still on scene of this deadly crash. Again, three people dead and at least 15 injured. We're seeing some of those people getting transported to area hospitals uh, right now. The 
charter bus, like you mentioned, carrying students from an Eastern Ohio school. And uh, we're working to learn exactly who, uh, how many students were on that bus that was involved in this crash. We uh, have been watching cars come and go from the scene, specifically ambulances. I can say I've been here for about an hour and a half, and I've probably watched at least 15 EMS crews come and go from this scene uh, throughout that time period. So just to give you an idea of how big that response has been here on this scene of this crash uh, kind of puts things into perspective. 310 itself, which is where I'm at right now in that overpass over I-70, uh, is pretty backed up. Cars are getting by, but like you uh, probably can imagine, there are people also getting off of the highway coming from those eastbound lanes that are having to be diverted off the highway. So things uh, are definitely moving slower around here, uh, but uh, cars, are, like I mentioned, are getting by on 310. Uh, but we uh, we don't really have a timeline exactly how long those uh, lanes of I-70 will be closed. Again, there are still dozens of first responders on that scene right now. We can still see them coming and going as we work to learn more information and confirm that for you. We're going to remain here, hopefully uh, continue to get those updates for you throughout the day. For now, reporting live, Amy Stuggerwald for 10 TV News. All right, Amy, thank you. We want to go now to 10 TV News reporter Kevin Landers, who's at Grant Medical Center. It's one of the busiest level one trauma centers in our state. Kevin, what are you seeing? Yeah, good afternoon. As you can imagine, uh, the people who were involved in that accident, uh, many of them most likely suffered burns from that fire, and that's why they were transported here to the level one center here at Grant Medical Center. We were we were able to capture at least two transports, one from Violet Township and one from the Granville Fire Department. Um, unknown of what the uh, conditions of the patients were, but we're told by Ohio Health that they are seeing five patients across their medical systems right now directly from that crash on Interstate 70. Um, and you can see right behind me, this is the emergency center. This is where uh, those EMS crews pulled into this bay right here, and they were taken directly inside the hospital. Uh, traffic here is back to normal here. Uh, nothing out of the ordinary in terms of transports here. We haven't heard of any kind of diversions uh, because they couldn't take uh, that many patients. So at this point, we know at least uh, five people across the Ohio Health System were taken here for injuries, but at this point, their injuries are unknown. Back to you. Kevin, thank you for that. Let's continue our team coverage right now with Lacey Crisp. Lacey, you are right there on Smoke Road, kind of an overpass over the freeway, and you actually spoke with an eyewitness. What are you seeing right now as we know that some people have been taken away from the scene? Well, I can tell you the sheriff's uh, office has made us move from that overpass. The, there were just too many people who were stopping to get a look to see what had happened with the accident that they just cleared the overpass altogether. So we've moved off to the side of the road here, off to the side of I-70, where you can see this absolutely horrific crash has happened. I talked to a semi driver who was just behind the fiery crash. Uh, he was on the road here for a couple of hours. He actually just turned around about two minutes ago and was able to head out. He's a regional semi truck driver. He drives from Pittsburgh uh, to Cincinnati in this area. He's been driving for about 10 years and he tells me this is the absolute worst crash he's ever seen. Well, we didn't see much at first as we were coming up the road. We heard something coming over the CB saying, oh, there's a wreck up ahead. So we started to slow down and as we were getting closer, I saw smoke coming way up ahead of us. So as we were coming down to, uh, to a stop, I exited my vehicle, kind of went up and looked up the side and I saw several tractor trailers, well, one tractor trailer for sure on fire, a car on fire, and they were trying to pull people out of a bus. So what I can tell you is uh, the sheriff's office and the Ohio State Highway Patrol are trying to get drivers off I-70 as best as they can, as safely as they can. Also, some of the emergency vehicles have started leaving the area. Some of the uh, west looking fire trucks and their ladders have moved from the westbound lanes to the eastbound lanes. Uh, we're still waiting on information from the Ohio State Highway Patrol, but I would imagine that's to clear the area so they can begin that investigation to find out exactly what led up up to this chaotic fiery crash exactly tell us how many people have been injured in this of course we're still waiting for that information but as soon as we get that information we'll bring it to you for now reporting live Lacey crisp 10 tv news Lacey, thank you for that we want to get over to our traffic anchor gabriella garcia right now 
Yeah, good morning. Take a look at this long line of cars here on I-70 at 310 that's being diverted off of I-70, and that's really been the case for the past couple of hours as we've been covering this situation. I'm going to repeat to you again what we've been repeating all morning. I-70, avoid both directions of I-70 at State Route 310 due to that crash that happened earlier this morning and those ensuing vehicle fires. But more specifically, take a look at that closure as it involves those westbound lanes because now we know, according to ODOT, that this is also affecting drivers in Hebron too. So those westbound lanes shut down even as far east as State Route 37. What I want you all to remember, whether you're going east or westbound, take US 40. You're going to be going slower than you would on I-70. That is a given. And take a look at that red there. US 40 is going even slower than usual. Just know you're going to be late to wherever you're headed if you have to go that way. I'll send things back to you. All right, Gabriella, thank you for that. Let's get over to Clay Gordon right now because, Clay, you've been learning more about this school that was involved. They were on that charter bus, and we're learning they might be banned students. Yeah, we, we saw images of them on the side of the road next to this crash scene, too. So the Cleveland 19, our CBS affiliate in the Cleveland area, is confirming it is the Tuscaroras Valley County Band that was involved in this crash. Uh, that we reached out as a newsroom, 10 TV has reached out to the school district and the school district is telling us that a bus with their students was involved in a crash, but they could not confirm to 10 TV that it was this specific crash here on I-70 that we have been talking about. We are also waiting to hear the ages of the victims involved in this as we're looking at brand new drone footage from 10 TV showing that Pioneer Trails bus and a semi truck involved in this as well. We reached out to Pioneer Trails for comment and they have not gotten back to us. Tracy, Angela. All right, thank you again for that update, Clay. We are continuing our coverage of this tragic bus crash, this deadly bus crash on I-70. Uh, we can tell you three people dead, 15 injured, we are going to continue our coverage of this. So certainly you can stay with us for the latest on 10TV News at noon, but don't forget you can also download the free 10TV app and that way you can get that information sent straight to your phone or go online to 10TV.com. We now return you to your regularly scheduled program and again we will see you for 10TV News at noon.
would you pronounce It doesn't matter. I mean, I could just step out if you'd rather, or whatever you guys prefer. They said they have VO. Do you want to use it, or? I, I could do either or. It doesn't matter. We'll just do straight live. They okay. said. Yeah, let me know because I'm in a different IFB and I don't hear there. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I'll just do kind of the same thing. I'm going to start off by saying we just now learned that the students on board of that bus they're from Tuscarora local schools. That is up by Canton. Dozens of trucks still on the road. Oh, let's take a look.
and we are just now learning that students and chaperones from Tuscarawas Valley local schools were on that charter bus. They were headed to a conference in Columbus. We found that out on the Facebook page. That district is located up in Canton, and as you mentioned, there are still dozens of emergency vehicles out on the roadway. I-70 is still blocked off in both directions. About two hours ago, there were large flames coming from that crash. We did get a crew closer up there, and it looks like a semi-truck rear-ended that charter bus. There was also an SUV involved. We're still not exactly sure of how this all happened. We are hearing there is going to be a press conference, and we're learning more. But just over an hour ago, school districts from the Columbus area are bringing buses to transport those people who were involved in the crash away from this accident scene and to a safer location. Again, you can see the dozens of emergency vehicles out there. The smoke does seem to be dying down, and we do know that three people have died at least this time. And we are going to hear from law enforcement soon to see if there is an update on that. We will be here, though, all day to continue to update you as we learn more information. Local for you with Edna, I'm Emma Hoffman, and C4. Speedway right now. Uh, I think he called him. I heard him on the phone. Hey, there's another photo. Um,
back in IFB just so you know. I have no idea what I'm going to say. Waverly, this is Amy, not Lacey. This is Amy, not Lacey. Okay. Standing stairs at the top.
Can you wipe? Very good. closure and how this is impacting traffic. Carly Dion and Kevin Landers are both at local hospitals where more than a dozen people have been taken. And Amy Steigerwald is live near the crash site. We do want to begin with Lacey Crisp, who has been out on the scene for hours now. Lacey, this fiery crash required multiple agencies from two counties. 
Yeah, it really is a devastating scene. There's no other way to describe it. You can see just behind me a couple of those very large tow trucks just arrived on the scene. Now, if my photographer Rich can pan over, you can see that red vehicle that appears to be facing the wrong way. It looks like it is smashed up against that semi that you can see is burned out. And there's that charter bus that's that bus that's right in front of it. You can only imagine what is going through that those parents minds of those those band students who were on their way to Columbus when this crash happened, this fiery crash. I talked to a semi truck driver who was just behind this crash when it all happened. He didn't see the crash happen itself, but he told me he's been driving truck for 10 years in this region and he's never seen any destruction like this. Well, we didn't see much at first. As we were coming up the road, we heard something coming over the CB saying, oh, there's a wreck up ahead. So we started to slow down, and as we were getting closer, I saw smoke coming way up ahead of us. So as we were coming down to a, uh, to a stop, I exited my vehicle, kind of went up and looked up the side, and I saw several tractor trailers, well, one tractor trailer for sure on fire, a car on fire, and they were trying to pull people out of a bus. Yeah, so traffic was backed up for miles. That semi truck driver that I spoke with was able to get turned around and get out of this area about an hour ago. The Licking County Sheriff's Office and the Ohio State Highway Patrol are doing their best to clear the traffic from this area as safely as they can so that workers, reconstruction crews, the Ohio State Highway Patrol, hazmat crews can clear up this area and so they can answer some of those questions for us. What happened? How did this crash happen? And to tell us just how many people are going to be impacted. Reporting live, Lacey Crisp, 10 TV News. Lacey, thank you. We want to get to 10 TV's Amy Steigerwald now. She's on State Route 310. That's west of the crash. Amy. Yeah, I'm a little bit west of where Lacey is at right now. You can see this crash kind of behind me. Actually, you can see that both lanes of traffic still shut down, both in those east and westbound lanes of I-70. And from where I'm at right now, we've seen crews come and go from the scene. EMS hazmat crews for the past three hours or so since we arrived here. Uh, and again, still working to learn all of the details, exactly what led up to this. We've also seen a CODA bus, uh, two CODA buses, I should say, and and two school buses come to the scene to help carry uh, stu people who were on board this bus away. This is a look right here uh, at this crash from above that our drone 10 video uh, captured. You can see just how extensive the damage is and how many first responders are on the scene still working this crash. We're still working to learn exactly how long the highway will be shut down for because it doesn't appear that there is a timeline on when things will reopen. But where I'm at right now on State Route 310 is where uh, traffic is being diverted off to. We've seen uh, traffic trying to move through getting diverted off of I-70 from the eastbound lanes on the other side of the camera that I'm talking to you on right now. There is backed up traffic that is being diverted off of the freeway right now as crews continue to remain on scene. Again, we've confirmed three people are dead and uh, many more that have been injured, at least 15 people. And of course, we're going to continue to follow this. We'll let you know once we learn more. For now, I'm live We're reporting live Amy Stagerwald for 10 TV News. All right, Amy, thank you. And our team coverage continues now with Kevin Landers. Kevin, you've been at Grant Medical Center all morning long. That's right. Ohio Health confirms that five people from that crash were taken to Ohio Health hospitals. We did see two transports. I'll take you to some video that we shot. This is just before 930 this morning as we captured the first two transports from this accident. One was from Violet Township and the other was from Granville Fire. We do not know the conditions of the people that were taken here, but we're told that Ohio Health did tr treat at least five people here at Grant Hospital downtown. I'm now going to send it to Carla Dion, who's at Mount Carmel East, with more on that story from her perspective. Carly. Kevin, Kevin, as you were saying, we're learning more about those 15 people who were injured and that they were taken to five area hospitals, including Mount Carmel facilities. We're here now at Mount Carmel East Hospital, where we believe some of those victims may have been taken. And now within the last hour, we received a statement from Mount Carmel stating we can confirm that following this morning's crash involving a bus and semi on I-70 in Licking County, injured individuals are being treated at Mount Carmel facilities. 
facilities. To protect patient privacy, we cannot release any additional information at this time. And again, that is all we know about those who were injured, but we will continue to keep you updated on the condition of these patients as we learn more. For now, live at Mount Carmel East, Carly Dion, 10 TV News. All right, Carly, thank you. And we are learning more about the students on board that deadly bus crash this morning. 10 TV's Clay Gordon joins us now in studio with details on that. Well, good afternoon. T 10 TV confirmed students involved in this crash were from Tuscarora's Valley Local Schools. Now we're hearing more from the school right now. The school district superintendent says in a statement posted on Facebook, quote, a charter bus carrying Tuskegee Valley students and chaperones on the way to the Ohio School Boards Association Conference in Columbus was involved in a very serious accident. It went on to say that right now our focus is on getting in touch with our Tuskegee Valley families who had loved ones on the bus. Now, Dr. Varancy says the next coming days for the school district will be, quote, challenging. Here's a look at where they were heading. The Ohio School Board Association, the school district is located up in Mineral City, Ohio. They were heading to the conference at the Greater Columbus Convention Center. As you can see from the map, the crash happened on I-70 in Licking County, 25 miles away from the convention center. Tracy and Angela, we just learned that this conference has been canceled for today. All right, thank you so much for that update. A lot of um, after effects, just a domino effect of yes. all of this tragedy this morning. We uh, are going to continue our team coverage and we'll talk about the traffic impact. Let's get over to Gabriela Garcia because Gabby, you first spotted this crash just as it happened right before 9 a.m. Yeah, good afternoon, you guys. And it was a big plume of spoke from both vehicles involved there. And hours later, you see the impact still very much apparent in really both directions of I-70 here at 310 due to that crash, due to those ensuing vehicle fires that happened. So we do know, like we've mentioned repeatedly throughout the morning as we've been covering this, I-70 shut down in both directions at State Route 310 where the crash happened. But the detours are kind of different if you're gonna head on I-70 in either direction. Right now, ODOT says, Authorities are diverting people from those westbound lanes of I-70 to State Route 37 there. So it's affecting people in Hebron as well as Kirkersville and in Etna. Eastbound detour. Folks are being detoured off on 310 from I-70 eastbound. So it kind of differs depending on where you're going. If you want something easier to remember, US-40 is your best bet eastbound or westbound for a detour. But you're going to be slowed down either way. You notice all that red there. Folks are going as slow as 14 miles an hour in that area. Just know you're going to be delayed going to your destination over there in Licking County. Back to you. All right, Gabby, thank you. Our crews are on those scenes, various parts of Central Ohio right now. They're working to get new information by the minute. For the latest, download our free 10TV app or visit 10TV.com and stay right here with 10TV.
battery level is low. Aircraft will return to the home point in 10 seconds. Return to home. During the press conference might start to hold up. Lacey's in, we're going after, I think. 
One minute. Okay, we might. Okay. Okay, sounds good. Uh, one minute, so long as the presser doesn't stop.
So I'm going to introduce in a moment uh, Lieutenant Nate Dennis, uh, the Ohio State Highway Patrol, uh, who will give you uh, some information. Um, the patrol is still in the process of uh, notifying families, uh, so they will not be able to give you at this moment um, any number in regard to the fatalities. Uh, I will ask um, Mr. Bruning uh, to give you some traffic information uh, so that you can let the public know about uh, what's going on in regard to the interstate. Um, let me just say that this is uh, our, our worst nightmare when we have a bus full of children uh, involved in a crash. And uh, it certainly is the worst uh, nightmare that uh, families uh, can endure or school can endure. Uh, this is, uh, as you know, been reported uh, a bus from uh, Tuscarawas, Tuscarawas Valley School uh, in the county. Uh, that was the bus that was uh, involved in the in the accident. Uh, so our hearts go out, and our, our prayers to all the families, all those who were on on the bus, uh, everyone who was involved uh, in the accident. Lieutenant. So at uh, 8.52 this morning, there was a crash that occurred out here on Interstate 70. Uh, it was on the westbound side near mile post 118. Uh, that crash in total involves five vehicles. Uh, one of those vehicles is a charter bus that uh, was transporting students from the Tuscarawas Valley uh, school system. Uh, that bus is a, a Pioneer Trails charter bus. I can confirm that this is a fatal crash. However, until all of the uh, proper notifications are made, uh, we're not going to give any details in regard to that. Uh, I will tell you that from that bus, uh, there were uh, 18 people transported to seven area hospitals. Uh, so again, at this time, we're not gonna release any names or any information about those injuries until all the proper notifications are made. Uh, this does remain an active scene with uh, the interstate still being closed. Uh, it will remain an active scene for quite some time as uh, our crash reconstruction unit uh, uh, does their investigation of this crash and as we investigate everything in its entirety. Uh, so we will update more later, but as of right now, that's all the information that we're able to, uh, to share with you at this time. Like the governor said, it's a very unfortunate circumstance this morning, it's a very sad circumstance. But uh, we're going to continue the investigation and provide you information as we're able. Thank you. Matt, you want to give him a highway briefing? Sure. Uh, to echo, first of all, what Nate said uh, and the governor have said, a uh, very sad day here in Ohio. And uh, our thoughts are out and with everybody involved in this. Uh, the traffic situation is going to remain in, in, in effect for quite some time. I 70 eastbound traffic right now is being diverted off here at State Route 310. You can either go north to US 40 or south to 204. If you're heading westbound, the traffic is being diverted off right now at uh, State Route 158. However, we do have a secondary crash that is complicating that at State Route 37. So for the time being, we're asking everyone to use State Route 79. They are working on clearing that crash up. Uh, so soon we will get that 158 uh, detour back up and running, uh, but for now, those are the, the end points of where this uh, detour is set up. And again, this is gonna be in effect for several hours. So if you're headed towards Columbus from the east, make uh, some additional plans, find additional routes uh, that you can use. Uh, check ogo.com, that's O-H-G-O.com. It's gonna be a great resource for finding out what these closures look like and what the traffic conditions are like out there. Um, but again, these, these traffic detours are gonna be in place for several hours. So we just ask people to be patient and avoid the area as much as possible. So again, our prayers with family members uh, as they go through this uh, absolutely horrible, horrible tragedy. So, uh, we'll be back uh, when we can give you more, more information when notifications have been, have been completed. You're planning on using this as the staging area for pressers going forward, yeah, Governor? Yeah, I think this will probably be the stage, just be the location here. Thank you, Governor. Thank you.